What's up, everybody? Call me ignorant. Please subscribe down below. Putting out these videos as part of the playlist, a necessary manifesto that I kind of been talking about the last couple days. This is going to be uh, episode number two of the story of my cultural political upbringing. And yesterday we talked about talked about my roots being raised in the Detroit area and uh, basically going to believe in some sort of meritocracy, which I think is just. I think it's in a in a good world. I think a merit, meritocracy is a good thing, and I think also. In any sort of system, a meritocracy is unavoidable and it's good because people that are better at things should be in the positions where they can affect change in the world and they can be better at things in fields rather than people that are worse at things. What I initially wanted to do with this video is talk about how my views on meritocracy and merit in general prime the pump for me becoming a libertarian in around 2013 or 2014. But by, I decided to go in a different direction with this video and talk about race and talk about my upbringing as it relates to race. I'm inside uh, taking notes a couple minutes ago and I'm realizing that before we get into my DC days and things like that, is I wanna get into the diverse racial groups and ethnic groups that I experienced and were part of my life growing up in the, tr the Detroit area. And my natural inclination with this type of video is to do some sort of all-encompassing magnum opus that explains the definitions of every single word and gets into just, uh, I'll point you here for anything, I, all there is to know about race. But what I'll say about, since that's not going to happen in this video, that this is not the first and it certainly won't be the last video that I do on race and racial groups. But I think it is beneficial to do a couple definitions or some sort of like, what are we even talking about here? Because people get ra called racist all the time. I get called racist all the time. People that are racist, people that aren't racist, that don't even believe in race, get, call ra get called racist all the time. And it g gets used as some sort of weapon essentially. And that's not how I have used the, the term racist or race in a long time. In fact, in my world, it's more of a compliment here because people get ra called racist all the time I get called racist all the time people that are racist people that aren't racist that don't even believe in race get called race get called racist all the time and it g gets used as some sort of weapon essentially and that's not how I have used the the term racist or race in a long time in fact in my world it's more of a compliment and one thing I do want to say before we kind of get into this stuff is that I don't hate anybody. I don't hate any people groups. I sure, certainly don't hate any ethnic people groups. I guess you could say in a certain respect, I hate criminals, but I don't even hate them. I just want them to be not in our society. So this isn't about hatred whatsoever. This is about observing differences. The second thing I want to say about that is that race is not just skin deep. That's one thing I've really tried to change my language about over the last uh, couple of years is it just slips out that I say because of the color of their skin, because of their skin color. That is a lie from the pits of hell, man. Race is not skin color. Skin color is one of the symptoms or one of the characteristics of race. Race is a biological genetic reality and skin color is one of them but so is bone structure, so is all kinds of things. I mean, I'm not a scientist and I'm, I'm never gonna be, but don't let anyone tell you that it's only skin color. There's genetic aspects in that you can look at the DNA. There's, you have to put your race, or they used to, used to have to put your race or your ethnic group on medical forms, and there's a reason for that. But essentially what we're talking about is ethnic biodiversity. Uh, you know, there's all these different schools of thought. I'm not well read on these subject, I've, subjects. I haven't read all of the crucial books that um, are required for someone to have a highbrow intellectual view on all these things. Um, I'm sure you could comment below what some of these books or, or podcasts might be. I've always just been a person that not just goes by instincts, but when I can observe something and when I can kind of come to understand through my flawed intellect and through what I can observe in the world, I tend to stick with it until, and not over explain things. I mean, sometimes I'm, I'm sure I talk too much, but I don't try to over complicate things or over explain things, but essentially race is ethnic biodiversity amongst humans. And people say, yeah, you know, people that in my opinion are wrong about race say that we're all one race, the human race. Well, that's true, we're all the race of Adam, but also from Adam, I don't know when it all happened, but the races did kind of split and 
it doesn't just mean there there's brought these broad big races such as what's now called black white uh asian or whatever but there's smaller races i mean it, inside of the the white race there are anglos there are germans there are there are swedes there are things like that so there's not just it doesn't just mean that there's just these three or four maybe five big broad great races there's smaller races as well and i guess what we're talking about is ethnic groups and for you to disagree with that take or think that i'm completely wrong about that in my opinion i think that you have to undergo undergo a massive amount of brainwashing and propaganda and you have to buy you have to buy into things buy into systems that just aren't tr that true and aren't that easily observable in, in society. I think you really, really have to buy into equality and buy into the modern world to think that there's only one race. Babies see race, infants see race. They see mom and they see dad and they see that mom and dad look a certain way and their face is shaped a certain way and they may even smell a certain way. I mean, I'm, I don't know that much about that, but that's a common racial stereotype that certain that the races smell different i mean babies can notice these things babies have an intuitive uh condition about these things of, of their people their family is a certain way and when people are a different way that that's observable but like i said before it's not going to be a magnum opus it's not going to be a a big this is my view on all things pertaining to the subject this is about my cultural upbringing in the Detroit area. And I remember becoming race conscious uh, very, very early on, very, very early on. Um, one of my mom's best friends growing up was black. Our neighbor across the street was black. And I remember being raised with these people around all the time. And, and it's a, it's a interesting point that when someone, and this is how the brainwashing works when you post a meme or when you make a tweet about race or about racism, most people's brain goes immediately to black people. That makes a lot of sense because of propaganda, that makes a lot of sense because of actual history, things like that. And I'm sure there's a ton of lies about the historical narrative regarding these things, but to be a racist in the society for the most part is to be against black people, which is not even the definition of the word. And one thing I'll welcome, me, welcome you to do is to look up the origins of the word racist as a pejorative. And before it was a pejorative, it was just a, a way that people use to describe their, the, themselves. But look into that. I might do a video on that in the future. But yeah, like I said in the last video, I was raised in a pretty liberal, pretty democratic, pretty uh, equality-based uh, upbringing. But on the other hand, I was also raised to have a racial, racial consciousness. And I don't mean that that came from my parents or my society around me or anything like that. I just think these things are easily observable. It's just person sees person and that person appears different and they have different customs, they have different cultural things, and they're just different. When it's so biologically observable and apparent, you, you kind of can't escape from it and you can't you don't explain it at the time, you just see it. So I'm inside taking notes a couple of minutes ago and uh, people have been calling me a racist or I've known that I've been talking about racial content for at least three years now. And I'm realizing when I'm taking notes about my life and um, what my upbringing, what my childhood was like in this way, that it's always kind of been part of my life. I've, I've always had racial humor. I've always, I've always talked about this stuff. I've always seen differences. Sameness has, humorous elements to it and differences have humor, humorous elements to it, whether it's race or anything else. That's why people do male and female humor. That's why they do religious humor. That's why they do racial humor. And I've always liked this stuff. I remember I'm, I'm a huge fan of stand-up comedy. I remember growing up l liking Bill Cosby. He would talk about these things. Eddie Murphy, uh, Richard Pryor, uh, Dave Chappelle. I remember watching Chris Rock and these guys all bring up this stuff. And it wasn't until, I don't know, eight years ago, Trump, a couple years before Trump, that this humor amongst whites, that people that weren't on side couldn't talk about these things. So like I said before, I'm taking notes about my, my life growing up and I'm realizing that I've always talked about this stuff and I've definitely al always joked about it. I remember the first time I saw the movie Blazing Saddles was in sixth grade and it was very interesting. I'd never heard someone say the N-word outside of a song before. I'm a lifelong hip hop fan. I have a rap album. Um, I, I love writing rap and I'm heavily influenced by black culture. I'm, I'm a jazz piano player, play basketball. I've always just kind of liked that culture, but I remember seeing Bla Blazing Saddles in 
sixth grade. And I remember my uh, my dad, when the person says the N word with the hard R, that he said that I should never say that word and I should, def I should never even think that word. And that was the first time in my life where I was like, huh, and I didn't really see a contradiction. I wasn't really a critical thinker at the time. I was just like, huh, here's this word that is tr so transgressive that you can't even say it. You can't even think it. So growing up with the brothers, you know, I play basketball and stuff like that. And I would call people, you know, pe we would say the N word as basically a term of endearment. It's like saying brother. And I could say it to them. They said it to, to, to each other way more than I said it to them, but I never got beat up. I never, it was never a problem until much later in high school when people, when the propaganda, the civil rights propaganda starts to set in. And I remember one time I'm walking through my neighborhood with a, with a black person and a white person, someone who appeared as a white person. And I'm talking about racial humor. I'm talking about jokes. And I told a couple black jokes. People are, are they're, they're laughing and stuff like that. And if any of these two girls are listening to this video right now, and I'm just getting this, I'm just butchering this, getting this totally wrong. Memory's fallible, but this is what I remember. I remember making a couple, uh, a couple black jokes and it, everything was fine. And then I said something about, well, what I really like is Jew jokes. And the one white girl started to say something to me and then the black girl like stopped her. And that's another time in my life, much like the blazing saddles uh, moment, where I noticed that there are things even worse than racial humor. And there's, it's humor or comments about another people group that we'll get into in a different video. A really funny story. <laughs> Really, I'm just such a naive guy. I've always been so naive. I've always just been so, I just say stuff. I wear my heart on my sleeve. I remember, and I'm a lifelong hip hop fan, like I said earlier, I remember in 10th grade, we're doing this math team thing in our math class. And me and my boys named our math team NWA. And 10th grade, I mean, I mean I'm 16, and I never stopped to think about what the letters to NWA even stand for. I just knew it was a rap group. I think my friend was trolling me. He's like, yeah, name it that, name it that. And I didn't even know what it means. And I, I swear, I swear with my hand on the Bible, I didn't know what it means. And I got in like big trouble. The The teacher was pissed. And I, I had a lot of plausible deniability because I was just like, I literally didn't mean anything by this. Maybe I'll get kicked out of class or something like that, but just one of these funny kind of racial stories in, in, in 10th grade, 11th grade. Also, I wrote a song about a white person who thought he was black and it was about him wearing a white guy wearing FUBU and something like, something like that. And I read it in front of the class and didn't get in trouble. So the point that I'm saying about this, I'm kind of just rambling, telling stories and things like that. And this video is getting going kind of over time. My point is to be a millennial or maybe a little older, maybe a little younger, being raised in America, race is everywhere and it's kind of messy. But nowadays it's not that messy, at least if you want to be approved in, in polite society, it's not messy, messy anymore. It's very simple. Don't step out of line. Don't talk about things a certain way. A couple clicks, a couple degrees past a certain way and you're in deep duty. You can't talk about it. And in my day, in my day, when I was a young lad, you kind of could. You kind of could talk about it in a certain way and it was kind of funny. And there were racial clicks in my high school, but you could cross lines, you could be friends with each other and you could say, oh yeah, that's what the white people do. That's what the black people do. That's what the Indian people do. I'm not sure what it's like in schools nowadays. I'm sure it's way worse as far as you're transgressing these these cultural blasphemies uh, you can let me know below if you're a little bit younger if you have a kid or something like that that's that's talked about these things but it was messy back then and it was fine the racial thing that when you have a diverse society it's always gonna be messy but back then it was messy and it was okay and we'll get into a different video that the, these are some of the reasons why I'm not in favor of, of a diverse society and I'm not just saying that for my society I'm essentially saying it for any society. I think that the better societies, when, when all other things being equal, I'll take the society that isn't diverse. That's why these problems don't really come up that much. I don't care if the food is better. Unity is what makes something strong. It's it's not diversity. You, you don't want diversity. I mean, to a certain extent, as far as viewpoint or whatever, or just points of view, sure, it's a good thing. But as far as just people group and custom one custom is going to be the hegemon but one you know when you go to someone's house and their customs are going to be the things that people do if you try to employ all customs or many customs then disaster is going to happen one is going to be at the top all the time it's you know, that's what a, a custom is i remember when i went to college 
I heard someone say the N-word as a pejorative for the first time in my entire life. And I remember that story about Blazing Saddles, about thinking about what my dad said. It really, like, and I remember these two guys that I, that I went to college uh, went to college with, they would say such and such is an N-word, right? And I remember thinking at the time, which is hilarious, that I liked almost everything about these guys other than that they said that. And it, at, at this time, I probably would be friends with them perhaps a little bit more because they say that word. Not because I hate anybody, because it takes a set of balls, it takes a set of cojones to, to even say that word in that day and age. That would have been in 2007, 2008 or something like that. Even at that point, to even use that word, it takes a lot of balls. So I actually kind of respect just someone's ability to say that word. And I, I've said it many, many times on a stream, as you guys know. Not to skip ahead too much forward to my life, but this brainwashing and this propaganda took a very, very long time for it to go away. I mean, I started streaming in 2019, in January, and even as late as 2020, mid-2020, I mean, the George Floyd riots that I was on the ground for uh, reporting in 2020 was when I really started to wake up, really started to become a nationalist and started to wake up on many things, not just race. But I remember live streaming in 2020 and seeing a couple of my fans. I was showing some video. I was showing some footage of uh, a town where people were all happy. I remember seeing in the live chat, someone said, all I want is a nice white town. And I remember even at the time in 2020, feeling like what does that matter what does that matter what does it matter if the town is white what does it matter if america's white why, why why does that even matter i've now and i've now come to believe that it does matter that that race does matter that it is significant it's a significant biological reality so it's 2024 right now and i'm just saying thank you i guess to the people in my chat and people that have been awake on this stuff before me that thank you for having patience i've always been really late to the party as far as all kinds of things so thank you to those people and thank you to the people that have I've been talking about this stuff for decades before, but I guess that's the end of the, end of the video, guys. These, this is not an all-encompassing uh, magnum opus, like I said earlier, but it is just showing you and telling you about what my upbringing was. It was very diverse, and I don't hate people, but I do think that race is real, and I think nature, God's creation, does display that. And I think that's not that big of a deal. I think that's the way that God set it up. I mean, if God didn't want there to be different racial groups, then there wouldn't be different racial groups. I don't think it's a result of sin. I don't think that it's a result of anything other than God's plan, and that's okay. Everyone can be saved. Every racial group obviously can be be saved. And to be frank, there is uh, there are a couple, one in particular, racial groups that don't believe that. I'm not one of them. So I am trying to invite more of a discussion with these videos going forward. So if you disagree with me or if you have something to add, please let me know in the comment section below. But that's the second video that we did about my upbringing. Not sure what the next one will be, but this will be added to the playlist that I'm doing, A Necessary Manifesto. And the next one will probably get into libertarianism and meritocracy and how my cultural and political beliefs started to be shaped during college and moving to DC in 2010. So hit the like button, do all those things that I'm supposed to say, help me grow the channel by sharing it out, and I'll see you guys in the next one.